Hello everyone and welcome to Spirit of God Christian Church's virtual worship service. Whether you are new online or have been joining us for a while now, we want to say thank you. It's your continued support to the ministry that allows us to bring you this broadcast each week. Like and share this message online and across all of your social media platforms. Download the church's app to stay connected with us. And if you haven't already, subscribe to our YouTube channel where you can find all Spirit of God Christian Church media content. At any time during the service, feel free to drop a comment in the chat, say hello to your church family, or simply say amen. Whether virtual or in person, we want to share God's word with his people. I have a few brief announcements coming your way. Then Spirit of God, let's get ready for another Spirit-filled worship service. Join us for in-person service every first and second Sunday at 10 a.m. at the Doubletree Hilton Roswell Hotel. Cast your vote. Remember, your vote is your voice. You can vote by mail, early voting, or on election day. We will have another men's ministry Zoom Bible study on Saturday at 10 a.m. Men, you don't want to miss it. Join us for Zoom Bible study each Thursday night at 7 p.m. Remember, questions are always welcome, and be sure to invite someone to dive into the Word of God with you. Good morning, and welcome to Spirit of God Christian Church. I'm Deacon Ed Jeffrey, and today during corporate prayer, God has a word of encouragement and hope. It comes from Philippians chapter 3, verse 13, reading from the NIV. And it reads this way. It's, it's the great apostle Paul who's speaking, and he says this. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead. Hallelujah. If you'll allow me just to walk this verse just for a second before we pray. You see, Paul is saying that everything he's been through, good or bad, he still has not taken a hold of it. And what is it? It's the righteousness of God. You see, God wants us to be just like him. And he gave us the, the perfect example through his son, Jesus Christ, amen? And through all that he's been through, I'm talking about Paul now, he says to himself, forgetting what is behind. Now, what do you mean by forgetting what's behind? He's not saying just forgetting it, but not letting it worry him. Whether it's good or bad, even the successes he's had, he doesn't, he doesn't harp on those things. But yet he strains toward what's ahead. Not stresses, but strains. And that word strain, took me back, thank you Lord, to, to one of my youngest childhood memories, waking up on a Saturday morning, just laying in the bed and looking out the window. And there was this favorite tree I had and this one branch that I would watch go through the seasons. And that branch would have this, this, this favorite leaf that I would have big. But as fall came, that leaf obviously would, would fall off that branch. And if you've been up north in the cold, when ice comes, it really thickens. And I, I remember seeing an a, a inch thick of ice on that branch. And as that ice began to, 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 to develop, the branch would weigh itself down. It would bend, it would strain itself, but it wouldn't break. But later on in, a, in another season, right? How many know what I'm talking about? That, that branch, that warmth came, melting the ice. And I got a chance to see that branch kind of straighten itself right back to where it was. Amen. See, so it is with us. Sometimes we are strained. We feel overwhelmed, disappointed. We're in a season of, 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 of sadness, a season of, of hopelessness. But I'm here to tell you that, that God, he, he may allow you to bend, but he won't let you break. He may allow you to go through the strain, but you won't snap, amen? And, and, and besides, 
What, what, what are we going through this strain for? A lot of times it's a test that's building us up for what the word says right there. What's ahead? So what's ahead? The glory of God. A season of restoration. A season of happiness. A season of joy. A season of great health. A season of better finances. Amen? I mean, we need to go before God's throne today, really thanking him for allowing us to bend but not break, amen? Shaping us, molding us, getting us ready for what's ahead. Let's get excited for that, amen? Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you that you are God and God alone. We thank you, Lord, that you, that you need no excuse to allow us to go through what we've been through, dear Father God. We thank you for your mighty word that reminds us today that we need to continue to press forward toward the righteousness of God. Lord, we, we thank you right now, but we need you, Lord. We need you right now, dear Father God. There are so many that are in a season of, of anger, a season of disappointment, a season of, of, of sadness, dear Father God. We, we need you, Lord, to help them. Even though you've allowed them to bend, dear Father God, we know through your mighty word <laughs> that you woke them up today a sure sign that you're not here to harm them, but to prosper them, dear Father God. We thank you, Lord, but we need you. We need you, Almighty God, to bring us out of a season that we may be in that's got us disturbed and confused. We thank you, Almighty God, that we can come before your throne, holding our hands high and say, here we are, dear Father God. Help us, dear Lord. And for those who are in a season of success, we thank you, God. We pray that you send your mighty angels to, to keep them in that level of success, dear Lord. We pray for those individuals who are so struggling and deciding to, to take action upon harming themselves or harming others, dear Lord. Those who have tuned in to Spirit of God Christian Church online today who are looking for hope, looking for an answer, to their troubles, Lord. We thank you, Almighty God, that we can press forward toward your righteousness. And we thank you for the perfect example you gave us in Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you for the service that you're going to bring forth today. We thank you for the mighty word and the manifestation of your word into our Holy Spirits, dear Father God. We thank you, Almighty Lord, for all of the things you're doing in our lives today. We magnify your name, Almighty God. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen.
Death could not hold you down. You are the risen king, seated in majesty. Oh, we bless the name of the Lord and we cry out this morning, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God of hosts, for death could not hold him down. If I go to all other persons' graves, they're still there, but death could not hold him down down. He is the risen King, the risen Savior, the one who died for my sins and rose on that third day morning with all power in his hand. He is risen. He is alive. And we thank God this morning that we can come to you in the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow in heaven, on earth, and under the earth. They shall bow at some point to the name that is above every name, and his name is Jesus the Christ, Mary's baby. Amen and amen. We thank God for you this morning. I'm Pastor Randall Knight and Pastor Spirit of God Christian Church. It is a privilege and an honor to come to you this morning in the name of the risen King, the one who defeated death for you and for me. All you got to do is receive him. Receive him in the power of his resurrection and live a life that is submitted and surrendered unto him. Amen. Don't you be ashamed to call him Lord and call him Savior because he is the only one who can save you and me of our sins. Amen. Amen. It is great to be alive today. It is great to come to you this way. And I just thank God for his many blessings upon each and every one of you. And with that song, before I even get into anything else, I just want to go right to communion and go right to the Lord's table because Jesus said this, the word says this, as often as you do this, Jesus said, often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. And we have to remember that he is the ultimate sacrifice for our sins. He is our Lord and our savior, our risen king. Without him, death 
hell would be our home, but with him, amen, we're passed from death to life and we can make our abode in his presence in the bosom of Abraham and in the heavens above. We thank God for our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. So as you get your elements and you get prepared today, I just want us to come to the Lord's table and just be thankful. I want us to do this only in remembrance of him. I want us to do this in a way that is worthy, as the word says, in his sight. So with that, let us pray. Father, we thank you and we bless your name. We thank you for Jesus Christ. We thank you for his sacrifice. We thank you that you loved us so much that you sent him to die for us, that we could have access, that salvation was attainable and available through him. Father, we bless your name today and we, we give you thanks, we give you honor, and as we come to your table, remove us, anything that's in us that's not like you. Father, help us to have our minds stayed on you. Help us to do this in remembrance of you and you alone. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. If you would, uh, the bread, it represents the body of our Lord Jesus Christ. He was crucified for Cal on Calvary's cross for you and for me. As Deacon Madison said last week, he paid a debt he didn't owe. Amen. And he paid it all for you and for me. Oh, I'm so thankful. I'm so grateful that when they hung him and they pierced him and they nailed him, they slapped him and they sped upon him, when they put a crown of thorns on his head, he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. But then he went on to say, it is finished because he is the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the whole world. He is the Christ. So with that in mind and in remembrance of him, the precious body of our Lord Jesus Christ cru crucified on Calvary's cross for you and for me. Let us take and eat all of it with thanksgiving. Amen. Now his blood was shed for the remission or removal, for the forgiveness, the wiping away of our sin. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But we are thankful that we have a savior. We know that there is a fact that goes on in the world. I don't care whether you believe or not. And that is that humankind sins. So the question always is, but what about our sins? Oh, his blood was shed for the removal, for the remission of our sins. And for that, we ought to be thankful. With this in mind and with Jesus in mind, let us remember the blood of our Lord that was shed on Calvary's hill for the remission, forgiveness, removal of all of our sins. We just have to receive what he did, receive now what he did, and take this with thanksgiving. Amen, amen, he is risen. He is alive. Death could not hold him down, for he is the risen king. Let the church say amen. Amen, amen, amen. I, I want to thank um, Deacon Ed Jeffrey for corporate prayer this morning. As I, um, I just wanted to get right into communion, y'all. I just that song just really ministers in such a way, and it's an appropriate song, um, you know, for communion. I want to thank the music ministry, uh, obviously, for that song and getting us into that place, into that mode for worship and and holy communion. Also, um, want to thank again Deacon Ed for for marvelous corporate prayer and just reminding us to continue to press toward the mark, reminding us that, you know, listen, we may not always get it right, but again, we don't have to live in our past. We can continue to go forward in that, in what God has for us in the days ahead. Amen. We ought to just be thankful. Amen. I'm just thankful this morning. I don't know why it's just in my heart today, but, but again, I'm just thankful to the Lord for just allowing us to be alive. A couple of quick housekeeping issues. Uh, just quickly, many of you know that, um, Early voting ended on Friday, so the election is on Tuesday. If you have not voted, I encourage you to go out and vote and let your voice be heard. Uh, there are some major races that are going on, um, uh, Senate races, uh, governor races, um, things of that nature, and so uh, and, and other issues that are on the ballots as well. But, uh, but again, just exercise your voice. Utilize that power that God has given to you uh, in the government that, again, still stands on his shoulder. And, and what I would also say, too, is... Let's just pray for our election. Let's pray that there's integrity within the election. Let's pray that uh, the Lord's will is done with who gets elected. And, and let's just continue to remember, and I say this, and I've said this um, for many a year, even after the election, 
what we need to understand, if our candidate doesn't get chosen or doesn't get elected, God is still on the throne. Let's not lose sight of that. People lose their mind at results of elections. Uh, and, and, and I don't understand that if you claiming to be a Christian, you got to understand who's on the throne. Amen. And he's still on the throne. And this I know. So that's why. But again, I'm going to exercise the power and authority that he's given to me to be able to go out and vote. And I'll say this to the us, uh, us especially in the African-American community and to women as well. People fall, bled and die for you to have the right, the privilege, the honor to vote. Go out and exercise that right. Don't let uh, their actions and their deaths even be in vain. Amen and amen. Um, uh, men's ministry uh, will have a virtual Bible study on this Saturday. Our brother Antonio Newman has a great lesson once again for us on November the 12th. You can get that information on the Church's Appen website on the events page on the calendar and the Zoom link will be there. And all men, I just pray that you come on and be blessed as we always are in that as well. And again, um, want to make sure that I uh, remind everybody um, that we're, you know, again, having in-person service on November 6th and the 13th. I know obviously that's today, but, um, but if you're in the local area and you weren't able to make it out today, I'm glad you listened to the virtual service. Um, come on out and worship with us if you are able to, and if you choose to on November 13th, the virtual service will certainly be here. Um, and again, I want to remind everybody as well that uh, while we did not have Bible study this past Thursday, we will resume Lord willing back on this coming Thursday. I had a couple of questions that came in from my members as well, and uh, we're going to address those as we go forward. And so again, I just encourage you. And if you uh, haven't caught all the Bible studies and, and again, you are you know, missing some this missing having Bible study this Thursday, they're on YouTube. Thanks to our media team who continues to do a marvelous job, not only with that, but also with this broadcast each and every weekend again. Today is our day that we um, have our deadline for our Thanksgiving mission piece. Uh, and so uh, items are being, you know, going to be sorted in person and everything like that. And then taken over this week over to North uh, Fulton Community Chairs. I, I just wanted to say that because I just want to thank all of you. Many of you gave um, items, uh, you know, again, in their original packaging and, and everything like that. The non-perishable items, the church, again, is providing uh, the meat and things like that. And we're going to get that over to them and many of you gave online. And so I just wanna thank you. Uh, you're such a giving church and here's what I know, that the Lord will always bless. He that gives to the poor lends unto the Lord is the Lord that will repay him again. That's what the word says, amen. And so many of you gave uh, and looked after those who uh, may not be as blessed as you uh, at this moment in their life and, and just need something. And so I believe we will um, exceed uh, over our 50. And I pray that the Lord allows me to come back and tell you, um, uh, how big a number we were able to get um, based upon your generosity, your kindness, and you buying into the vision of what the Lord said we were to do as a church uh, for the Thanksgiving season. And so I just pray that God continues to bless each and every one of you. All right. So now I want to get into the word today. Um, <clears throat> it is my plan not to preach long. <laughs> Amen. Uh, I always just want to give you what, what thus saith the Lord. You know, I, I, I really, I know sometimes, uh, you know, uh, I've always said, you know, I know at times I can be an acquired taste, if you will. That's just Randall, not the gospel. The gospel is sufficient on its own. As I said, uh, even when we did the piece in Bible study on Christian nationalism, you ain't got to connect yourself to Christianity. Christianity stands on its own. Christianity is what it is because, and you judge Christianity by Christ, by Jesus Christ, for he is the perfect example of it. Anything else that's trying to tie itself to Christianity that's not 100% Christianity is just trying to just exploit the name of Christ for its own agenda. And that's with anything. So again, uh, I just want to preach and give you what thus saith the Lord uh, for us as a church. I pray that you see the word manifest itself in your lives. And I pray that you see the word is applicable uh, in your lives. And I always want you to be able to walk away with something to be able to carry on uh, for the days ahead, the months ahead, the years ahead of your life. And more importantly, I'm always going to do my very best to preach Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Him lived, born of a virgin, lived a sinless life, 
crucified on Calvary's cross, buried in the tomb, rose with all power in his hand. I'm going to preach that if I don't preach nothing else. But today I want us to remember a couple of things or God wants us to remember some things and stay focused on some things. Because sometimes we can get away from things. And I, I just want us to just kind of, you know, amen, as, 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 as you kind of, you know, know with the camera lens. Every now and then, if something gets out of focus, get a little blurry, you just got to fine tune it. Just a little turn just to remind you, you know it's there, right? Amen. And so I just want to give you one scripture. And then I think I got a support scripture later on. Of course, others, I'll quote things in the biblical text. I'll quote to you. But I just want you to just be blessed this morning by this word because the Lord gave this to me and um, and gave me an assignment. So I'm going to give you that and then I'm, I'm going to get on out your way today. Um, here it is. Uh, very simply, Ephesians chapter three, verse 20. Says this. Now unto him. Meaning God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Right now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly. Above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. <clears throat> Real simple. Amen. Now to him. Amen. The one who spoke and the universe leapt into existence. The one who said, let there be light. And there was light. The one who turned water to wine. The one who healed uh, a woman with an issue of blood for 12 years, the one who continues to walk with us by the power of the spirit now unto him that is able, amen, to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that work in uh, worketh in us. So today I just want to just simple title. I want to stay. I want us to to, to kind of dwell here a little bit, staying focused on what God is able to do. I think a lot of times uh, if you've ever been around uh, people, uh, especially people who are negative, they always think about what, you know, a negative reaction as to what's going to happen. A situation may present with themselves. They immediately go negative. They don't think about what is or what is what is what God is even able to do. And I think sometimes even not only from a negative standpoint, just from a faltering of our faith standpoint, oftentimes we just don't believe that God is able to do it. And, you know, God will remind me at times when I just, you know, I may say to myself is that's not going to change or, you know, unless the Lord step in, you know, that that really that that's going to be what that's going to be all the days of my life or something like that. And God will remind me. But do you believe that I'm able to do it? Do you believe that I'm able to change it? And so it, it just kind of shakes me a little bit and puts me back in focus. So one of the things I want us to do is to remember what he is able to do. Remember that you and I exist because he was able to do that. And so, again, many of us live the lives we live because he was able to do it because by societal standards, by the standards of humankind, we shouldn't be where we are in our lives. Amen. By the standards of this country, we shouldn't. Many of us shouldn't be where we are. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit. But I want us today to just not lose sight and to just be focused on what God is able to do. Now, here's the thing we always have to remember. Just because he doesn't do it, as the three Hebrew boys told the king, look, just because even if our God doesn't do it, what they were what they were alluding to is the fact is that that he it doesn't mean he couldn't do it. So I need to just to have the kind of faith, especially spirit of God in this year of trusting God, I need to have the kind of faith that just reminds me, to keeps me focused on what God is able to do. As a matter of fact, let me just go here now because that just kind of came into, came into my spirit here. Listen, many, many members have had some really heartbreaking losses in their life. And I know that during that time, and even maybe even now, you still are like, I, I just am never going to be able to be healed from this. And while I do not dismiss your pain, what I will share with you is this. I know that God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think. Amen. According to the power that works in us, he is able to heal exceeding and abundantly above all we can ask or think. He's able to mend. Amen. He's able to wipe away tears. He's able to fill voids exceedingly abundantly above all that we're able uh, above all that we're able to ask and think right here's the thing i want us to understand god is able amen 
to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. So even in situations that yes, may affect our very lives for the rest of our lives, I just want all of us to know he is still able though, amen, to bring us peace, to bring us comfort, to bring us out of some dark days because of there's power that he has put in us, amen? Amen. But but let's look at this. I want you to look a little bit at God's track record a little bit. And then, then I'm going to just talk to you and then, then I'm, I'm going to get out your way. I just got four things I want to really highlight today. And then God just wants me to go into a place of how we are connected to him. God is able to first redeem from sins. I love this. Let me tell you why. Because I'm a sinner saved by grace. Amen. See, again, Hell was going to be my home. That's the road I was on, the wide and broad gate that many find that leads to destruction. But he's able to redeem from sins. And really what redeem simply means is to pay off. Amen. Amen. You know, one of the definitions of redeem is to pay off. And from a theological standpoint, it is to deliver from sin and its consequences by means of a sacrifice offered for the sinner. Jesus Christ was the one true sacrifice offered up by the Father for all sinners. He's able to redeem from sin. You know, when you think about, and, and I love what Deacon Madison said even uh, 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 last week, Jesus did pay a debt that he didn't know and paid it in full. I just want you to walk with me just a little bit. Could you imagine somebody who you know is not living a righteous life coming to you and God has given you what is necessary to pay off all of their debt. And they come to you and they say, listen, you know, yes, I know I'm out here in these streets. Yes, I know I'm doing this, doing that. Not really going to try to change that today, but I got a hundred thousand dollars in debt. And you know, God has more. You have more than enough to pay that off. You're like, wait a minute. I didn't incur that debt. That's your debt. Yeah. You know, I ran into, you know, got, got, got the gambling a little bit. Oh, owed a couple of people, bought some drugs, did some things like that. Yes, I owe some people some money. You know, I just got some restitution, all this other kind of stuff. You're like, but you know, it's a hundred thousand dollars. Can you can you help me out and pay it off? How you feeling? Amen. That ain't it, huh? No, no. You gonna have to get somebody else. No, that's not that's not even my debt. Why would I pay that off? Why would I do that for you? Now let's go to the cross. Amen. Jesus, I got sins that reach from here to eternity. I'll never be able to pay them off because I'm the sinner. Amen. You're the sacrifice. And you know what Jesus said? I paid that for you before you were even born on Calvary. I did that for you. I redeemed you of your sin. I took your balance and, and just in my example, I took your balance from 100,000 to zero. And guess what I knew when I was there and they stretched me wide, when they were piercing me and nailing me. Guess what I knew? I knew you weren't going to change today. Amen. I knew you weren't going to change immediately. I knew you wouldn't. Even, he knew some wouldn't even receive what it is that he did. Do you understand in this world how Jesus is rejected even more each day? But yet he still paid that debt. For you and for me. Oh, he's able to redeem from sins. He made the sacrifice for you and for me. So why, what are you saying to me, preacher, this morning? What I'm saying to somebody who stumbled on this broadcast, what I am saying is no matter the sin that you have committed, it does not prohibit the blood of Jesus from wiping it away. Amen. No, you don't know what I've done. It's stuff that don't nobody else know I did, but no, no, no. God knows you did it. And what he said was, I put my son on the cross. I gave him all of your sins and he took them on to pay that debt. And I'm just letting you know, all you got to do is ask him. All you got to do is receive what it is that he has done for you. And I'm telling you, it will be forgiven with a sincere and genuine confession and belief. Amen. And here's the thing. What I want you to understand, don't you know if, so, if you paid off $100,000 for somebody, somebody ought to at least be a little grateful. Amen. That's why sometimes you don't know 
Why your neighbor praises God the way he does. You don't understand why your coworker has the faith that they do. You don't understand why some people weep sometime and some people just have joy on their lips and in their heart because they're just grateful. Amen. That I've been redeemed by the redeemer, that he paid off the debt of my sins. How make I? Yes, that does not mean I don't have consequences for my sin, but he'll even walk with me through my consequences. But the debt and the payment. Hey, man, come on. Y'all stay with me just a little bit. See, here's the thing. You can still pay off the debt, but the consequences are it's going to take some time before your credit report clears up from what took place in incurring the debt. Preach, Randall. But here's what happens is that God will walk you through it because at least my credit report has got time now to heal because the debt has been paid. Yes, I have consequences for my sin, but he'll walk with me through the healing process. But at least I don't have the debt anymore because of the blood of Jesus. Amen. You know, a lot of people just want him to wipe away sins as if there are no consequences for it. But I'm here. I'm a living witness. He'll walk with you through the consequences. Amen. He'll be with you through those consequences. Amen. And we saw last week. And if I walk in obedience after he's paid my debt and I've received that debt payment, if I walk in obedience, it'll be well with me. In other words, that that, that my credit report will begin to clean up faster. Amen. Amen. Then it would have taken if I had started, even though the debt was paid and went back to disobedience. Amen. Amen. Oh, yeah. God is able to redeem from sins, including your sins and my sins. He's able to do that. But here's on top of not only is he able, he's willing to do it for you. Amen. I can promise you not too many people. If you walk up to them and they don't know you and they know how you they know you're not living right. Going to pay off $100,000 for you. Jesus was willing to pay off an eternity of sin for you and for me. Amen. And the, the, the consequences for that truly were death. He was willing to remove that. Amen. Amen. All right. God is able. Number two. And this is probably one of my favorite points today. Redeeming sin is, is my most necessary point. This is probably my favorite point. He's able to reverse the plans of your enemies. Amen. Satan included. And there's some others out there, too, that come against. He's able to reverse the plans of your enemies. And I do want to make a side note here. That is often tied, which are often tied to our sins. See, that's why that's why number one is so important that he he's redeemed. He's able to redeem us from our sin, but he's able to reverse the plan, he's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. When I am in Jesus Christ, he's able to reverse, amen, the plans of my enemies. Oh, yeah, it's some folk that's been on. And, you know, I, I looked at this this way. A woman caught in adultery. Amen. That, that's, that's a situation that, that her enemies were looking to find something, found something and brought it to Jesus, wanting to stone her to death. Hey, that was their plan. Their plan was to bring her to Jesus and then have her stoned to death. But what they failed to realize was they were bringing her to the Redeemer. Amen. It's, it's, it was God's call out of his sovereignty. He could have condemned her to death, even though they brought her wrong according to the law. But nevertheless, he could have because the payment for sin is death. But I saw him reverse something. Amen. The plan of her enemies were that she would die in her sin. But the plan of the Redeemer was that she would live a new life. Amen. In him. Here's the thing. So they bring her. We caught her in the very act. Y'all really need to mind your business. But Jesus, not surprisingly, has the perfect response. He that is without sin among you, let him cast the first stone. I know y'all quoted me the law. Amen. You know, it's, it's amazing to me, religious folk. I ain't talking about people who are whoever I ain't say relational people in Jesus Christ. I'm talking about religious folks who who hold to their religion above a relationship with Jesus Christ. They hold to their rituals and their rules above Jesus Christ. Here they come with bringing the law. You know that the law says that should not commit adultery. You know and see your enemies will do that. Amen. 
Well, you know, I know they're supposed to be saved, sanctified, full of the Holy Ghost, but you know the word say they ain't supposed to be doing. I, I, bring them to Jesus. Jesus said, okay, I'll tell you what, let's talk about your sins first. Then I'll deal with them. Amen. No, no, no. Here it is. He is without sin among you. Let him cast the first stone. Jesus looks at her. Jesus continues to write on the ground because really what he's really saying is this is just pure foolishness. Y'all have brought me. But you got to be careful when the mob gets together. Amen. You know, in this cancel culture, that's what happens is people people have sin, fault and error. And then all of a sudden the mob wants to cancel them and destroy their entire life. But if you bring it to Jesus, what he'll do is he'll reverse the plan of the enemies by making them look at their own sin. And even their sin in the moment with this devious plot that they had. Hey, so I told you a few weeks ago, you got to let God vindicate you. Amen. God will justify you. And so again, he looks and everybody drops their rocks and walks away. And he looks at the woman. He said, where are thine accusers? I have none. He said, neither do I accuse you. He said, go and sin no more. Now, notice he never condoned the sin, but because he's the redeemer, amen, he can wipe away the sin. But he tells her, go and sin no more. Preach, Randall. What I'm trying to tell you is this. If you come to me, I'm not your enemy, and I know God can turn a life around. But if I share with you what sin says, it's not because I don't love you. It's because I do love you. Knowing that Randall has his own, we all have to get better. Amen. Oh, I know. People are quick to say, judge not that you be not judged. And then they want to stop that. No, no, no. That's Matthew 7. Go to verse 2. For with what measure you judge, the same shall be measured to you. We all got to stand before the measuring stick, right? If the measuring stick says thou shall not steal, that's not what we should be doing. Stealing is wrong. God has already judged that as a wrong behavior. To point that out is not condemning you. To point that out is because I love you, because you love me so that we can be better. Now, but he'll reverse the plan of your enemies when the enemy's planning on destroying you because of your sin. That's a whole different dynamic. Amen. That's why we have to walk in love with those who are sinning and love them enough to share what thus saith the Lord on this matter. Not compromise it, but walk in love in it. Amen. Amen. But but he reversed the plan of the enemies. He did that with the woman called adultery. He did that with Joseph and his brothers. Amen. Within that, I'm not even going to go long in that. Here's the thing you got to understand. Joseph and his brothers that which you meant for evil against me. God has turned around for good. Joseph would tell him later on at the time because the plan that they had for him to either be sold in slavery or eventually be dead. Amen. God reversed that plan. He goes to Potiphar. Potiphar's wife has a plan for him to lie with him. Amen. And then when it doesn't work, hey, she lies on him and gets him in prison. God still reversed the plan because he had favor in prison. And eventually he got out and got into the palace. But God will reverse the plan. God is able to reverse the plan of your enemies. What are you saying? What I'm saying is even though people may plot against you on your job, in the, in the career you have, in the business that you have, competitors, even around you in your neighborhood, people may not like people for various reasons may make themselves your enemy and have plans to destroy you. But the God I serve is able to reverse the plans of my enemies and make me prosperous. And what they meant for evil. Hey, I've seen him do it. But you got to remember, he's able. So in the midst of you being persecuted, in the midst of them coming against you, you just got to remember that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. You stay connected to the power of God and watch God reverse the plan of your enemies. Number, number three, God is able not only to redeem from sins, not only to reverse the plan of your enemies, but then he's able to resurrect what was dead. Amen. Oh, amen. Amen. Oh, God is able to take things that were once dead and bring them to life again. He's able to take something and bring it back to life. Oh, see, the beauty is in Jesus Christ. See, when you look at this, even even just in the points in general, first of all, he's able he, he sent Christ as a redeemer. So he's able to redeem sins. Then even the plan that they had to crucify him and to kill him and to stop the movement that would become Christianity. 
He reversed that plan. And how did he do it? Because he resurrected him when they when they killed him on the cross. He resurrected him. Jesus said, no man, take my life, but I lay my life down. See, there was always a plan to follow the plan of the enemy. But then he resurrects what was dead. I say this. What are you saying to me? What, I, what I'm trying to tell you is understand we see this in the life of Christ. We see this with the prophet Ezekiel. Ezekiel, can these bones live? And I love Ezekiel's response. Lord, thou knowest. Amen. And God calls the bones in the, in the valley to come to life because he's a God that gives life. He's able to resurrect that which was dead. So I'm telling you to those who believe the marriage is dead. God is able to resurrect it according to the power that is within you. There has to be a power that is willing to change and submit to God. But God can resurrect it to those who have a career. Amen. Or something you desire to do in your life and got sidetracked. I understand it takes place and you figure that dream is dead and gone. God is able to resurrect it. I know you got married and had those kids and, and you had to make the sacrifices necessary to keep the family together. But God says, I can still take the gift, the talent, the ability that I put into you, that it was tied to the dream you had when you were young and raise it up again in this new season now. God is able to resurrect what was once dead, a life. And, you know, I think about my life. My life was dead I, to the outside world. It didn't seem that way. I, I had a lovely wife, a child. Again, I, I graduated from college and, and I was working and everything like that. But my life was dead because I did not have Christ at the center and the staple and the foundation of my life. I was a churchgoer. Amen. Walking dead. Amen. Not a Christian. It was not until I got to the Redeemer. It was not until I got to the one who can reverse things. And then I found out that he could resurrect a life, a calling and a purpose. I said this in the in-person service. I, you know, I, I received sermons, full sermons in dreams at the age of 16 years old. Not just one. I'm talking about several. But again, that had gone by the wayside. Life had just happened. And, and I didn't understand what was going on because I didn't have a relationship with God. I just went to church. But oh, when I met him and I came to that place, I saw that the enemy had tried to distract me and put me on a different path. But God reversed that and he resurrected the calling on my life that I believe was dead. And he brought it back to life again. I sit here today in front of you. Because of that, I just want you to know it ain't over till God says it's over because God can resurrect it. When they thought they rolled the stone and had the guards there and put the signet ring on it, they thought it was over. But on that third day morning, I'm telling you, he rose with all power in his hand. God can do that to your marriage. God can do that with that kid that you think is wavering. God can do it with your life. God can do it with your career. God can do it with your dreams according to his will. Amen. Amen. When they came and brought him to the tomb and I'm going to go to my last. When they came and brought him to the tomb, what they said to him was with Lazarus. <laughs> His sister said, Lord, if you had been here, he wouldn't have died. But I, Jesus says, I just need for you to have some faith right now. He said, Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. I know they, they, they're going back. I know I'll see him at the last. Jesus, I am in the present. I am able to resurrect. Because I'm him. Hey, man, I'm the redeemer. I'm the reverser. I'm the resurrector. I'm the one that can do that. And he did it. Lazarus come forth. Loose that man and let him go. Here's the thing about it. I want you to understand. He will call you by name. He's able to meet you right where you are. Call you by name. Reverse your life. Redeem you of your sin. And resurrect the purpose of your life today. And here's the thing. As I told you before. He was willing, amen, to go to that cross for you and for me. He's willing to do it for you today as well. And then number four, God is able to restore and replenish what was lost in sin. Oh, this is, this is magnificent. I'm here to tell you, yes, he'll redeem you of your sin. He'll, he'll reverse the plans of your enemies. He will resurrect what was dead. But he will, and I had to put these together, restore and replenish what was lost in sin. He will fill it again until it overflows. You know, sin costs. 
That's why the old hymn writer would say Jesus paid it all. Sin costs. And many of us know, if you're honest, what you paid for the sin wasn't worth what you got. Because those consequences can be far-reaching, and they can be long, they can be detrimental. I want you to know he'll walk with you through them. But they're serious. And here's the thing about that. Make no mistake in this, that you'll always pay more. See, <laughs> sin costs way more than what you get for it. Always. And I know it doesn't, see, part of the enemy's deception, lies, are to convince you that what you're getting is better than what you're going to pay for it. And here's how he'll do it, too. And I'm going to get to restore and replenish. But I got to say this now. Here's how he'll do it. He'll even leverage the love, compassion, and forgiveness of God to get you into sin. Because what he'll tell you is, God will for you know God's a forgiving God. You know he's a loving and a merciful God. He's compassionate. He's got, you've got grace. So go ahead and do it. But what he's doing is he's setting you up. Amen. Setting you up. And again, to use my credit analogy, what he's doing is he's getting you to pay $5 at 100% interest. By the time you pay that off, you spent way more than the $5. That's what he's trying to get you to do. And that's why I love my Savior because he paid it all in full, including all of the extra that came with it. But I'm telling you, you lose so much in sin, but God is able to restore and replenish what was lost. Amen. Amen. And, and here's, here's what it is. Look at this. Let, let me just give you these and, and, and I'm good. Here's what I want you to understand. You remember when Jesus' first miracle at the wedding in the Cana of Galilee, they ran out of water, or ran out of wine, I'm sorry. And, Jesus, and, and Mary comes to him and said, they, they, they have no more wine. Woman, what has that to do with my hour has not yet come. Jesus was very clear, but, but here's the thing. As a result, she was asking him that they are out. Would you feel? That's really what she was asking him. Jesus told him. And she tells, she tells those who follow him, she says, do whatever, whatever he tells you, do it. Jesus says, fill the water pots up. And they filled them up with water to the brim. They had an expectation of what he was going to do. If they had filled it up halfway and said, well, we'll see. See, that's why a lot of people live in we'll see lives. Amen. Because they have no faith and they have no expectation on what he's going to do. And also there's an obedience piece. He said, fill it up. He said, fill it up. He didn't say do halfway and see what I'll do. Preach, Randall. I'm, that. That's just an asterisk. You can have that. Listen, they filled it up to the brim. And guess what they got? They got to, to the brim blessing because he turned the water into wine. In other words, he replenished what was lost. He'll do the same in our life. And I just need for us to understand it. But I'm going to give you some word about the fact that he'll restore and replenish. Go with me. Joel chapter two, verse 23 through 25. Say very simply this. Be glad then, you children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given you the former rain faithfully. He will cause the rain to come down for you, the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. Look, what he's saying is he has given you the former rain faithfully, and he will cause the rain to come down for you, the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. The threshing floor shall be full of wheat and the vat shall overflow with new wine and oil. They had lost. They had been ravaged. But here he is restoring and replenishing. Verse 25. So I will restore to you the years the swarming locust has eaten. How many know that he's a God in full? He's able to do exceeding abundantly above all we can ask or think according to the power that working in us. That's just what the swarming locust has eaten. But he does exceeding and abundantly. The crawling locust. He didn't have to do the crawling locust. He had, he, all he had to do was do the swarming. The consuming locust. He didn't have to do crawling and consuming exceedingly abundantly. And the chewing locust. My great army, which I sent among you. What he says is, I'll restore to you the years that were taken from you. I said this last week, that God will catch you up. And I'm here to tell you in my life. I didn't come to him until I was around 31 years old. I want you to understand something. And I've watched God bless. Since that time in my life, things that were lost, I've watched him restore and replenish. 
I've watched him. And I only say that about me, not to lift me up, but to give him glory because I was on this journey. I've been on this journey. I know the authenticity of it. I've watched him. And he'll do. He don't love me no more. than He love you. I can promise you that. And you probably don't have some of the consequences I had to live with and deal with. But make no mistake. He's able to replenish and restore like no one else because he's able to do exceeding abundantly. Don't you forget that, that what God will do, what you lost, hey, God will restore what was taken from you. God will replenish. You allow God to handle it and before you know it, he'll bless it that way because he's God. But then it says in that scripture, media team, pull it up for me, Ephesians 3. And 20 King James said now to him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Let me just finish this here. And I want you to understand something. This is about us having this connection and the charge through that connection that gives us the power and allows it to work in us. Right. So here's what I just need for us to understand. We got to be connected. It's, a, it's amazing how many folk. Stay disconnected from God, but still want the power. Preach random. No, no, no. You don't get no power that way. Amen. You know, one of the things I love about that is, is that as long as I stay connected, see, he doesn't run out of power. And then again, he can always give me a boost and a charge. And he gives me a boost and a charge because I stay connected to him. What's your prayer life look like? Prayer life look like? You got to be connected. What's your devotion life look like? You got to be connected. What's, what's your Christian life look like? You got to be connected. And you have to stay connected to him because what God says is if you stay connected to me, then now you're tied to the source of exceeding abundantly above all you can ask or think. But it's according to the power that works in you. If it is not the power of the Holy Spirit, if it is not the power of God, if it is not the power of Christ, if it is not the Father's power, you're not going to be able to do exceeding and abundantly. It's going to fall and it's going to falter at some point. Too many people are missing the blessings of God, the exceeding and abundant blessings of God in their life and power of God in their life because they're not continually connected to Christ. You cannot. Amen. Y'all stay with me. A lot of folk want to be connected to Christ and the world. No. Choose this day whom you'll serve. You ain't going to be able to do that. You're going, you want to be connected to the world? You get the world's power. Limited, flawed, faltered, defeated. You want to be connected to exceedingly and abundantly? You stay connected to Jesus Christ. Never lost. Always power is always running through and allow that power. Y'all stay with me to work in you. You plug in your devices. Amen. To a power source. and You connect them and they begin to charge or they begin to work and to function. But they can't work without being connected to the power. So God is able. Whether we connect it or not. It just behooves us to be connected to him. He's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we can ask or think according to the power that works in us. Make sure you receive the Holy Spirit of God. You receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And you acknowledge the Father as the one who spoke and it came into existence. And then allow that power to say, God, work in me. Send whatever I need in me. Work it. Work it in me to change me, make me more like you, but allow me to stay connected to your power. If I stay connected to his power, I'm going to see God do exceedingly and abundantly. Amen. Amen. And amen. Stay focused, staying focused on what God is able to do. Amen. I just want you to understand and to know that there's a great power that's available to you. It's attainable. It's accessible to you. And his name is Jesus Christ. He is the one who redeemed you, redeemed me. He's a redeemer of our sins. He's one who can reverse the plan of our enemies. And Satan had a plan for you every day. Jesus told Peter, Satan has asked to sift you as wheat. But I pray for thee that thy faith fail not. And the reason why that was because God had a plan. Amen. He had a plan for Peter. When it came to the New Testament church, the enemy wanted him to deny him. 
and then get him off course as a denier. But Christ said, but I pray for you. Satan asked for you every day. He said, but I turned that thing around. And on the day of Pentecost, it was Peter standing up. Amen, said this is what was spoken of by the prophet Joel. Amen. It was Peter who, who the enemy had a plan for and he reversed it. Amen. And then he is one truly. More importantly, I want us to know that he is a God above all else who will resurrect that which was dead. Peter, had to, Peter probably had to really think after he denied him that his life was over. No. When Jesus resurrected, he said, go and get Peter too. Bring him on. And then he restores and replenishes. Amen. What was lost in sin. Amen. He did. He restored and he replenished Peter back to the place that he needed to be to carry out his assignment. I know at times we sin. Even those of us that are on assignment, we don't always get it right. And we get it wrong before God. But I want you to know that if you come to him and ask him for forgiveness, God has a way in time as we walk in obedience with him. Oh yeah, he'll restore and replenish what was lost in sin. Hey Amen. That's a good word for you today. I pray it blesses you and I pray you stay focused on what God is able to do in your life. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We bless you and praise your name. We ask for forgiveness of our sin by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And we come to you, God, with thanksgiving our heart. We thank you that you're able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Lord, right now in the name of Jesus, if we come before you, if there are any out here who have not received Jesus as Lord and Savior of their life, God, we pray right now that they will receive what he did on the cross for them and be redeemed of their sins. We pray, Heavenly Father, for those of us who have received what Jesus Christ has done on the cross and are living for him, God, that we will never, ever not appreciate the magnitude of his redemption of our sins. And that, God, we continue to see you reverse the plans of the enemy in our life. And Father, it is our prayer that in the course of our life, God, that you continue to resurrect things that we even thought were once dead and gone and were, were past our time and prime now. But God, we know you're able to resurrect it and bring it to life again. Things we had given up on and given in on, God, right now, resurrected according to thy perfect will. And Lord, we know that you're able to restore and replenish what we lost in sin because you're a God that can do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or think according to the power within us. God, right now, fill us with your power. Help us to stay connected to you all the days of our life. And God, continue to do a great work in us that we might see your exceeding and abundant blessings over our lives and over the lives who are around us to your glory alone. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. I'm Pastor Randall Knight, Pastor of Spirit of God Christian Church, staying focused on what God is able to do will keep you in a good place in him. Get out of doubt. Remember what he is able to do and walk in that. God bless you. God keep you is our prayer. Wow, what a great service and word from the Lord. Whether online or in person, we want to continue bringing these broadcasts. If you would like to support their ministry, you can do so via the church's app or website or cash app. We thank you for taking the time to tune into today's service and hope you were blessed by it. Remember to share with others so that they can be blessed by it too. In a year of trusting God, while we don't know what tomorrow brings, we do know to trust God in all things. Have a blessed week.